Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Hope you are having a wonderful day. Are you having a wonderful day, Appa? He's like, let me down, let me down, woman. Today we have a highly, highly requested video, and that is what should you do if you cannot feed a raw diet for your ferrets? So I'm going to help you out today, answer this question, and I hope you find this video useful. All right, Appa, say goodbye. I gotta do some work now. Although I have heard many bogus excuses on why people cannot feed a raw diet, I've also heard many legitimate reasons from people, and I totally understand that there are some people out there that just cannot do it right now, and that's fine. So I'm here to help those people today figure out how they can better their bowls for their ferrets. I also wanted to, before I start this video, address some comments that I've been getting on some of my videos uh, because I guess some of you are growing tired of my raw content and I'm here to tell you that's just too bad. There are plenty of other ferret accounts that you can follow that promote feeding kibble. I am not one of them for many reasons. I do not feel comfortable promoting something or recommending something to you that I feel is unhealthy, that I feel is dangerous for your ferrets. I don't want to be responsible for that. Pet nutrition has also just become one of the biggest passions I think I've ever had. I love learning about pet nutrition. I've learned so much in the past couple weeks specifically, and it's just such a fascinating topic to me and um, how corrupt the nutrition industry is when it comes to pets. Uh, so I don't plan on stopping that anytime soon. And if that bothers you, I don't know what to tell you. Um, I am a raw feeding account. I promote raw diets and that's what I'm going to continue doing. And that's actually what I've always been since my first First ferret video I've always been a advocate for raw feeding and I'm going to continue doing that because I feel so strongly about this diet for your ferrets your dogs and your cats so I'm gonna continue promoting it <laughs> I hope that makes sense anyway let's move on to the topic of this video so I came across this really nice and concise list from a holistic veterinarian, Dr. Karen Becker. She had a list of the best to worst pet foods, pet diets um, in an article. And I think that that setup is really helpful because you can go through and if you can't feed this, then go to the next one. If you can't do that, then go to the next one um, until you find something that you can actually do. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. I will be adjusting her list though. So it won't be the same thing um, because I feel like it's not exactly suitable for ferrets so I'm going to adjust it a little bit to make it more suitable for ferret consumption. All right so on her list and on mine the first is of course a balanced homemade raw diet. Now if you cannot do this the next would be a commercially available raw diet so this is something that uh, companies make that you can buy that are balanced and it's raw food. So that is an option, and a lot of people actually don't know that that's an option um, that they can do. So it's already pre-balanced for you. It's very convenient. But you do have to be careful with the brands that you choose. Some brands use low quality ingredients to make their raw grind mixes. Some use good quality ingredients. And unfortunately, they don't have to disclose. No pet food company has to disclose where they get their ingredients from. So you don't exactly know which brands are you know, honest and which aren't not or which um, are using low quality ingredients. So that's why a lot of people prefer to do their own homemade raw diet rather than relying on a company um, to produce that food for their animals. And I totally understand that. Although I have found many raw providers that I feel safe buying from, uh, some of which are Raw Feeding Miami and My Pet Carnivore, as well as Hair Today's Whole Prey Grinds. I think that they are all great companies they, I trust them. So this is a solid choice for those wanting to feed raw but want it in a convenient form. Keep in mind if you're following this type of diet with the raw grinds, they don't really do too much for teeth. So you're going to want to supplement with either raw meaty bones or you're going to want to brush their teeth at least every other day. So if you cannot feed a commercially prepared raw diet, the next would be a dehydrated or freeze-dried raw diet. This is a solid diet choice. However, 
However, there are a couple downsides that come with this. The first being it is extremely expensive. I know that I wouldn't be able to justify paying for a dehydrated diet completely for my ferrets. It's just way too much money. You also have to make sure that the brand that you choose is free of synthetic vitamins and minerals or mostly free from those. Freeze-dried and dehydrated diets should be rehydrated prior to feeding because it has the same issue with kibble where it dehydrates the ferret as it enters the body and goes through the system. So you're gonna wanna add water to the food before serving it to your ferrets to prevent that from happening. Again, these diets also do nothing for teeth. So you're gonna have to supplement with either raw meaty bones or brush your ferret's teeth every other day. A good brand that I've looked into for a dehydrated food is Zeewee Peak. Now, uh, not all of the foods that they have for cats are the same, but most of them contain all of what a ferret needs as far as like animal body parts go, but they still do contain um, certain synthetic things in the food, so it's not just purely animal product. But it is not a bad food and it is still better than kibble and wet food and so on. So if you cannot feed a dehydrated or a freeze-dried raw diet, the next on the list would be a homemade, home-cooked diet for your ferret. This is a diet that I don't commonly discuss on my channel and that is because it is a lot easier to mess up this kind of diet than it is to mess up a homemade raw diet. This is due to the fact that heating alters the meat's nutrient composition. It would be incredibly difficult to balance a home-cooked diet without knowing and understanding exactly the cooking process and how it affects each individual ingredient that you're cooking. You also cannot feed cooked bones. That is not an opinion, that is a fact. You cannot feed cooked bones. It is extremely dangerous. The cooked bones are dry, they're brittle, they can splinter in the body and cause problems inside. So you always wanna feed only raw bones. So you're gonna have to supplement with raw items anyways. And then, you because raw diets have this calculated into the meal plan that you have, you have to calculate how much meat to bone ratio each raw meaty bone is that you feed so you're you know that you're um, so you can determine what the amount of meat that you're gonna be feeding that was a really confusing sentence but um, there's a ratio of meat to bone in every raw meaty bone and in raw feeding it's already you know we already have calculations on it and um, we base our meal plans off of that but with cooked diets it's it's hard because you have to add the raw meaty bone the raw item to the cooked food so you have to determine you know how much meat you have in the cooked food and then how much meat is on the raw meaty bone and it's just it's confusing <laughs> you also still have to go out and buy the meat the bone the liver the organs you still have to buy all of those items so you're still buying them you're still handling them you're still preparing them it is really no different from a raw diet other than you have to cook it so it's an extra step um, that adds into your preparation time. That being said, a balanced home-cooked diet will still be much better than kibble and wet foods, so I still would place that above those kinds of diets. Keep in mind though that there are a lot of brands that sell home-cooked type diets for cats, meaning they should be suitable for ferrets as well, and it's just not true. I recommend staying away from those home-cooked brands because a lot of them contain starches, legumes, other vegetables, fruits, things that ferrets cannot digest. So if you cannot feed a balanced home cooked diet, the next would be a wet food. Wet food or canned food is considered better than dry food due to its moisture content. Keep in mind though that they are still being made by the same kibble manufacturers. They still have the same regulations that they have to follow. So the ingredients will most likely be just as bad, just as dangerous as dry food. And please, please, please stay away from grocery store brand canned food and wet food and that goes for dry food as well grocery store food is just generally not the best it's the low shelf low tier um, products that you can buy i recommend completely staying away from that and to be completely honest with you i don't have a wet food that i 100 percent recommend and i don't feel comfortable recommending or saying anything that i'm not 100 percent behind it's just, it's me, it's the way that I am. I don't feel comfortable recommending things that could be potentially harmful because I, I don't believe that you should feed a wet food or a dry food to a, a pet. I think that they should be fed a balanced raw diet. So um, when you, you guys message me asking me, you know, well, I can't feed raw, I need, give me brand names. Like I need brand names for dry food that I know is safe. And I, I honestly cannot, I, I can't give you any names. 
for dry food, I have one name that is decent. You're going to have to do that research on your own and feel free to message me and uh, check with me first to see if it's a decent food. Please do that before feeding and I will give you my best judgment. Next thing on this list is dry food. So if you cannot feed wet food or any of the foods listed above, you're stuck with dry food. If you want to find out exactly how dangerous dry food is, I highly recommend watching my video, The Truth About Pet Food, or you can watch the documentary Pet Fooled. It does a really good job of explaining the regulations that they have and what is allowed in our commercial pet food. It's pretty eye-opening. Or you can simply go to the store, pick up the closest dry food bag, turn it around, look at the ingredients, and see for yourself. It is full of ingestibles, carcinogenic ingredients, synthetic products, additives. If you absolutely, absolutely must feed a dry food and you can't do any of the listed above diets for your ferret, Dr. Elsie's Clean Protein is what I would recommend before the super popular Wysong Digestive Support for ferrets. I do not like this food. I have bad personal experiences with this food and it just has a, a lot of really, really awful reviews on this food and serious reviews, serious accusations of this food really harming people's pets. So hey, this is Brian. If you want to learn more about Wysong, check out Bryn's blog post. So I recommend staying away from that. Dr. Elsie's clean protein formulas are decent, but again, not perfect, not something that I would feed. I just want to put that out there. Feel free to look into it, but please do not put my name on it if anything happens to your ferret. So after dry food, this diet should absolutely not be fed under no circumstances, and that is semi-moist pouched food. In order to make it semi-moist, they add an ingredient called propylene glycol, which is considered, it's approved in pet food, but it is not healthy for consumption in dogs, cats, and ferrets, but yet it's allowed in pet food. It is also closely related to ethylene glycol, commonly known as antifreeze. Now we move on to the absolute worst diet that you could feed your ferrets or your cats or your dogs, and that is a unbalanced homemade diet, raw or cooked. That being said though, making a raw diet balanced is not a tricky task. Follow the basic guidelines, adjust accordingly to your pet's needs, and you're good to go. People act like it is the most difficult thing in the world, and I have so many people messaging me saying, I wanna feed raw, but I really don't wanna do it wrong. I'm terrified of doing it wrong. You have to give yourself more credit. It is not that difficult. It is not rocket science, and I'm sorry if that sounds harsh in any way, but it's really not that difficult. The people who give raw a bad name are the ones who go out and ignore the guidelines, ignore the ratios, and just do whatever they want. Buy chicken breast, you know, any, any raw meat that they find, and then just feed it to their pet without following those guidelines. Those guidelines are set there for a reason. These people are the reason why conventional veterinarians do do not recommend raw diets for any animal. They see people do it incorrectly and then that's it for them. They are not going to recommend this diet for anyone regardless, you know, if you're planning on actually following the guidelines like a normal person should. If you want to know how to properly balance a raw diet, simply message me, check out my blog, check out my raw feeding for beginners video. There are so many sources, resources out there for you to help you balance this diet. The next section of this video I'm going to be discussing how to better your ferret's diet if you are feeding a dry food. Keep in mind that I will not be recommending feeding raw and kibble together. There are many reasons for this. It's a bit of a controversial subject, but more people do it for dogs, and dogs are a completely different species than ferrets. Ferrets are small, ferrets have a more sensitive digestive system, and tend to not do as well on a raw and kibble diet, and anecdotal evidence suggests that when you do this, it promotes a bacteria bacterial overgrowth in their system and can lead to problems. The number one thing that you should be doing if you are feeding a dry food is adding moisture into the meal. So that might mean adding a homemade bone broth with no seasonings or just adding water to your pet's meals and letting it sit a couple minutes before feeding. This helps get that moisture back into their body because when they eat the kibble, it sucks out everything 
thing as it's going through the, their digestive system and it dehydrates them, causes issues as far as you know that goes and it's just good if you add the moisture back in. So I highly recommend doing that if you are feeding a dry food. The next being feeding weekly eggs. Feeding the egg in its entirety by whisking the yolk and the whites together and feeding maybe one to two per ferret each week. Not only are eggs packed in vitamins and nutrients, but it also acts as a natural hairball preventative for them. So if you're feeding it weekly, your ferrets are less likely to develop hairballs. You should also find a way of adding in freeze-dried organ meats. This is an exception to liver. You should not be adding liver treats or freeze-dried liver treats or even feeding raw liver along with kibble because liver is packed in fat-soluble vitamins, meaning they can't excrete the excess of this vitamin, so it just stores up in their body and causes vitamin toxicity. But you're going to want to stay with other organ meats like kidney, thymus, anything that isn't liver. You also find a way to feed freeze-dried fish. Generally fish maybe one to two times a week in the diet. Fish contains loads of fatty acids and other nutrients, although be careful if you're feeding salmon oil regularly, you might not want to do the fish. Feeding whole freeze-dried fish is a really good way of adding extra nutrients, vitamins that they wouldn't normally be getting without it. Please do note that kibble-fed ferrets imprint on their food, so getting them to even eat freeze-dried meats and items can be incredibly difficult. That is all that I have for you today. I hope this video was helpful. I know I've gotten this request so many times and I just haven't gotten around to it because I really wanted to figure out a way to go about this in a good way. Please do not forget to hit the subscribe button for more ferret content. That is all I post on this channel, ferrets and more ferrets. Do not forget to follow me on Instagram, join my giveaway, which actually ends in a couple days and I will see you in my next video. All right, bye.